Hey, everybody, it is Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the Friday edition of Today in Sports Betting. As always, I'm joined by my partner, Scott Reichel, from up there in Long Island, New York. Scott, how are you today? Doing pretty well. I uh, had a nice past couple of days, so hopefully that carries over into Friday. Yep, can't really complain. You got a lot on the card. I know we're going to be talking about football uh, in, the next video, in the next two videos, so looking forward to doing that. But, yeah, a lot of sports coming up, a lot of sports on the horizon, and looking forward to covering it. Excellent. Um, all right, so we're going to start with the NBA, as is our tradition. We're going to uh, take a look at the two games that are going to be on national TV for tonight, Scott. And, boy, we got a couple of barn burners, don't we? Well, uh, no, not really. By barn burners, I mean I'd rather burn my barn down and watch it than uh, watch either one of these games, actually. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, the nightcap could be okay. But uh, first game, Scott's going to be between the Hornets and the Pelicans. Man, this, um, this might be a good game two years from now. But uh, right now, I'm not a, uh, not a massive fan here. Two teams that are kind of underachieving so far. Of course, uh, only one team really was anything expected of them, and that's the New Orleans Pelicans. Scott, tell us about the Pelicans so far this season. So last year, the Pelicans were known for being a bit of an underwhelming team that only scored points and didn't play any defense. This year, they're an underwhelming team that only plays defense and doesn't score too much. So it seems like they kind of just switched extremes. But they're 4-4. Four and four. Uh, They blew a massive lead against Indiana two games ago, and they ended up losing to the Thunder by one in their last game at home, the Thunder are terrible. I mean, there's no other way to put it. That team right. is borderline tanking. Yeah, they were an eight-point favorite in that one. Yeah. And now uh, New Orleans is coming back here with another home game. They were laying five and a half. Now they're laying about six and a half or seven. Total's been bet up from 217 to 217 and a half or so. Maybe I, – I think we're in agreement on this one. I can't take the Pelicans laying this many points. This team just – they might be able to win some games every now and then, but I can't look at a team that just blew a double-digit lead with about two minutes to go against Indiana and then lost to Oklahoma City outright as about eight-point favorites and just take them laying seven here. I'd have to lean Hornets. This Hornets are a pass for me. Yeah, it's a uh, – they haven't, they haven't laid this many points to anybody except Oklahoma City. That didn't work out too well. And that, and that did not work out that well. This is a uh, – uh, you know, it's the Charlotte team that's obviously having their struggles. Uh, they got a couple of nice wins. They've got a, they've got a win against, uh, they've got a win against Brooklyn. They got a win against Dallas. Uh, they did pick up a nice road win last time out against Atlanta. Um, yeah, that's enough for me to take the points here. I think this one is a, they're, they're a team that's pretty inconsistent as far as, as far as their defensive output goes. They're pretty consistent on offense. They don't score much. Uh, they could have uh, maybe just what the uh, doctor ordered here against this New Orleans team. Uh, yep, two bad teams. Uh, too bad we got to watch it. Um, you gotta, I got to play Charlotte there. I'm with you. Any thought on the, the total? It's the Ball family versus Zion. That's the only reason why the game's on TV. Oh, well, there you go. But Because you got the first matchup between Alonzo and LaMelo. You also have Zion in there. I mean, I'm not surprised New Orleans gets these primetime games, but – at the end of the day, you, I'm disappointed that they ended up going with this matchup because who cares? Man, I would have to, uh, I would have to really search my list uh, to find something I cared less about than watching the Ball family play. It's also fair. Um, you know, I'm I'm old enough to remember when you used to have to do something first before you mm -hmm. got any kind of hype or publicity. So yeah. So are you are you fan? Do you think the personal opinion, Scott? Do you think the balls are actually going to turn out to be anything? Uh, I think, I think Lonzo is not very good. Uh, I know defensively he can offer some upside, but I don't think Lonzo is any good. I actually think LaMelo is talented. I think LaMelo can actually be a starting point guard who can contribute a decent amount. I know you can say, well, Lonzo can put up 10, eight and five and like 10, eight and seven. Like he's, no, he's, he's bad. Like if you just watch him play, you can just tell he's not a very good player. But I think LaMelo actually has talent, and I think that he can potentially develop into something. But I think LaMelo is a higher ceiling than Lonzo. Do I think either of them are going to be all-stars or anything like that? All-stars don't mean anything because it's all popularity contests, so maybe LaMelo can make one, but I doubt it. 
Right. I think they'll just hang around for a while, and you're just like, remember that one time where that one obnoxious father got two of his son's top three draft picks, or like top four draft picks? Good times. Yeah. That, yeah. They're going to be a flash on the pan in history. I think you can agree with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm, I have, I've seen nothing to indicate that they are anywhere, they're worth anywhere near the hype that they've had. So. I think you'll agree that LaMelo has actually looked okay since he came over. Alonzo has been hyped up for what feels like about eight years. And I think he's been there for maybe four. Yeah. And I, I just don't see it with Alonzo. And people keep waiting and waiting and waiting. That entire bubble experience for Alonzo he looked like one of the worst players in the NBA for about a month. It was really, really bad. Yeah. And I just, I just don't see it. But anyway, that, that's my take on Alonzo Lamelo. I'd rather have Lamelo if I had the choice between the two. Yeah, fair enough. Um, all right. So now we're going to turn our attention to the late game. Uh, my, the fortunes have changed here in the last few years for these two teams. Scott, it's the Clippers and Golden State Warriors. Uh, the Warriors are currently five and a half point dogs. Didn't we? I feel like we just talked about this game. Isn't this a little bit of deja vu? Yeah. Is this, this is really the, I guess, well, you know, what do you, what else you want to see late, Scott? You want to see Raptors, Kings or Bulls and Lakers? Uh, really not many options. You know what, my friend, this seems like it's going to be a long NBA season. Uh, well, that's the thing about the NBA is that people always talk about the very good teams. You know, they're on TV. They forget that there's also a lot of really, really bad teams that yeah. a lot of people are not interested in seeing. Yeah, and the good teams aren't always playing each other. Yep. So, you know, we like I said, we already talked about this. Give me a reason. Give me a reason to not take the Clippers. I can't. Okay. Uh, the only reason why you'd consider it is, well, Curry at 13 points and the Warriors only lost by about seven. So your argument could be, well, if Curry plays better, then they probably win the game. Uh, I don't really care. Uh, I think the Clippers are the better team. I've gone through this on numerous occasions. The main issue I have with Golden State is that if you take Curry away, like they like the Clippers did in the first meeting, then congratulations, you have Oubre going four for 13 and 0 for 6 from 3. Right. I, I, Wiggins actually played well. I'll give Wiggins some props. I believe he went like eight for 12, but he ended up having 19 points. He was actually pretty good. But Oubre is just – he's got the basketball IQ of a lima bean. It, it, it's just really bad. If you just watch how he plays the game, he, he just forces so many ill-advised shots. And it's not even ill-advised shots where you even have big men in the paint. It's when you have nobody there, so you can't even try to generate a second-chance point. Like he, right. He's just chucking it up, and there's three Clippers uncontested for a rebound. He, he yeah. just needs to learn how to play within himself, and he's already been in the league for an underratedly long amount of time, so I don't think he's going to suddenly re- change his styles. Yeah, and for the record, we did talk about this game um, day, be- day before last on Wednesday. Uh, it ended up being a 108-101 Golden State loss, and that, of course, uh, Clippers were able to cover that one. Um, you know, I know funky things are happening with the uh, with the back to back, or you know, the the two games in a row, whatever you want to call it. And uh, technically, they're not back to back, but we came up with a name for it. But I forgot what the hell we were gonna do. Yeah, I know. There's something involving deja vu, but I can't remember. Deja two. Deja two. I think that I think that was I, I said double header, but you preferred deja two. I do. Um, so to me, I I think that was the best Golden State could play against the Clippers. I think I think about a seven point loss with Curry playing badly right now rep- represents their ceiling. No, no, and, and that's the question: is it is it Curry playing badly or is it good Clippers defense on Curry? It's both. I, I just meant that it, for the sake of Golden State, assuming Curry does not play well, do they really have any shot? No. Oh, oh no, not at all. And the point was you can make the argument that in the first meeting, yes, because he went five for seventeen and they still only lost by seven. I don't think it matters. I would still take the Clippers. I, I don't think this. I don't think this Warriors team is very good. I don't love it. Um, just yeah, too many funky things there happening with the Deja too. But I'd wait to the under though. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's a good play. Um, it was two thirty the other night, and they ended up putting up uh, two thirty 
214 or whatever the heck it was. It was 209, but you 209, also had 108, 101. Yeah. You also had like a 30 something point first quarter. So you also had a quarter in there that just completely threw the game off. But well, but uh, even, even with it, it wasn't even on pace to go that far over anyway. That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, is that an aberration or can we count on one stinker quarter between these two teams when you have Golden State going cold involved? Well, I don't think it's a matter of just trusting in one stinker. It's a matter of taking the 209 and saying the second matchup, do you think there's going to be a massive 22-point turnaround for an over? I don't see it, so I'll lean to the under. Seems unlikely. Yeah, it's uh, until we until we get a better body of, of evidence, until we see more of these, uh, I'm still going to take the better team and the trend that it was started in the first game. So serious question, by the way. I know that Ubre spent some time earlier this earlier in his career off the bench. At what point does Kerr just look at his team and just start switching up the lineups? I know, I know that they're currently four and four, so it hasn't been as bad. But if you look at who they've beaten, they've beaten a bunch of scrub teams, and they've lost all the good teams. Right. At some point, you got to start juggling some rotations. Yeah, I think you've got a little while, but um, put Pascal in the starting lineup, take Ubre out, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think that's. I think that'll be the first move that they make. It's uh, it's, it's coming. I'm because I'm not a big Wiggins guy, but at least he can create off the dribble and do something. Right. Ubre just takes way too many jump shots for a guy who can't hit any jump shots. Yeah, very true. And Wiggins can go to the rim. He can do something. And you mentioned how good he was in pick and roll. So he bring he has some value offensively. I don't know what Ubre does. Yeah, I'm not sure because he's not he's not much of a, a of a defender. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's I think that's the first move that's got to be made. I think you know, but at four and four, it's not time time to hit the panic button. I know, I know what you're saying about the quality of victories, but at the end of the day, you look up, it's still four and four. So. Yep. All right. Well, there you go. That's a couple NBA games. You know, I know our job is kind of to generate excitement, no matter what's going on. Uh, it's just hard to get excited about the <laughs> NBA card tonight, but I'm sorry. I can't really disagree there. I mean, looking at some of the games on the side, I know Phoenix against Detroit is very attractive because Detroit's awful and Phoenix is very good. Uh, of course, Milwaukee against Utah. Uh, this Utah team is bad. Yeah. Or at least they're playing badly lately. And Milwaukee, they've been streaky. I still hate Milwaukee's bench unit with a passion. But at home, they've been very good. So it wouldn't right. surprise me if Milwaukee comes out and just smacks them because Utah, something's got to – I did the same thing last year. They got off to a slow start and everyone's going, oh, they got Mike Connolly. What's going on with Utah? Then they somewhat woke up for about a month. And then you looked at them again and said, this team is still not great. Not great at all. Yeah, and I, and I, I don't want to – I kind of misspoke. There actually are some good games on the card. I've got a couple of premium plays from the NBA. It's on about yeah. like 8 o'clock and whatever, so they kind of messed up the original TV scheduling, but they're games I'd rather watch. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So there are some playable games. Um, I, just, like I would watch Houston or Orlando if it was on TV. I got a premium play on that one, as a matter of fact. Then I'd watch it. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's a decent game. Um, so yeah, the, the, and the, uh, the, you know, the Denver, the Denver Dallas game ended up being okay yesterday. That was a, uh, I, 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 if you want to put that kind of quality on, that's, well, I got lucky. I, I liked, I had the over in the game and it went to overtime. So I yeah, got you, you did get lucky. And, uh, anybody that had, and I had, I had Denver, um, in a I know we disagreed on that, but Denver should have covered. I mean, you know what? They absolutely should have covered the, you know, I, I just said I don't like Denver at all. Cause I can't trust this team and I, can't trust the, I can't trust Denver. If, if Jokic makes makes his free throws in the fourth quarter, Denver covers. Correct. I'm just acknowledging that without Jeremy Grant, this team is lost on the perimeter defensively. They are just bad defensively. What Doncic have? 39, 13, and nine. Uh, yeah, they didn't. They didn't have much of an answer for for Doncic, but but you know that's. Yeah, it comes with the territory. Yeah, it really does because on the other side, they really. Uh, Jokic had thirty. Yeah, they, they couldn't stop Jokic either. So. I think, that's why I like the over. I, I just didn't think that the pace would be so slow early on before it picked up. Yeah, you know, yeah. The only thing to stop Jokic was Jokic at the foul line. So. Yep. Anyway, all right. Spilt milk. Uh, you agree with? Uh, uh, I don't know if you have any premiums on any of the plays I mentioned, but I'm assuming you agree about Phoenix and Milwaukee. Uh, Phoenix, I have a premium. Milwaukee, I do not, and I agree with you. I think that. Uh, I, I just have to fade Utah. I think catching the Bucks minus five at home against a, a very sketchy Utah Jazz team is a is a is a, a good play. 
Mm. I, agree, I agree with that. All right, man. So there's our uh, Friday NBA action for everybody. As always, if you're looking for more information on these games or any other games, don't forget to stop by and check out winnersandwiners.com, the preeminent site for predictive sports analysis on the web. Winnersandwiners.com. Live it, love it, learn it. It's no, not right. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes? Works for me. Okay, good. Uh, for myself, for Scott Reichel, for all of us over here at Winners and Winners, appreciate you guys stopping by. Don't forget to drop us a note in the comments section. Let us know what you're uh, playing for today. Let us know if you're digging the show or not. Of course, as always, like and subscribe. We sure appreciate it. Stick around. We're going to be doing a couple of NFL videos talking about uh, this weekend's wild card action, so don't go anywhere. We'll see you then on today in sports betting. Take care, everybody.